Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so we have looked at these three so far. We have looked at inflation pressure fraction, we have looked at the atmospheric pressure and the uh, super pressure. Now, the next thing to look at will be the ambient air temperature. Other things remaining same when the ambient air temperature changes and changes slowly. This is the first expression. So, when it changes slowly, you are giving enough time for the thermal equilibrium. We know that uh, if you give enough time, there will be a conduction. Okay. So, when T A changes or the ambient air temperature changes, the temperature of the lifting gas and the balloon air, they also change but they take time to change. However, there are two things. One is that both helium and hydrogen which are commonly used LTA gases, they are excellent in thermal conductivity. So, they will quickly help in the temperature equilibrium to be reached. And when the T A changes slowly, then the superheat that is created because of change in the uh, ambient air temperature can be ignored. Because superheat basically means when there is temperature which has not been absorbed or which has not been uh, equalized over a period of time. That is why that is what is the superheat. So, we recall that the lifting, uh, the net lift is basically given by this expression which we have seen so many times. If I put E equal to 0, it becomes P s by T A into K V. <coughs> Therefore, the gross lift change will be just because of T A 2 and T A 1. So, it will be 1 by T A 2 minus 1 by T A 1 into K V and P s can be taken out as common. Okay. Now, also recall that the ballonet air weight difference, uh, we saw it last time, is P s plus delta P s p into 1 minus I 2 upon the temperature at 2 minus the same thing at 1 into K V. So, let us ignore delta P s p with respect to P s because P s is a large quantity and delta P s p is a small quantity. So, to make things simple because remember we are looking at changes in one parameter when others are not changing. Either they are not changing or we are ignoring the minor changes. So, we knock off delta P s p in this expression. So, you put delta P s p equal to 0, you will get as P s times 1 i 1 minus i 2 minus P s times 1 minus i 1 upon the temperature which is going to be uh, a 2 and a 1 plus the superheat. Now, suppose we assume that P s is constant, P s h is constant, T s h is constant because we are looking at only change in the T a now. So, other things remaining constant, we can show that uh, I 2 by I 1 which was basically uh, P 2 by P 1, you know, P 2 by T 1, T 2 by P 1, ha, P 1 by, thank you. So, those pressures will get cancelled out because pressures are same, P s is same, P s h is same. So, the pressure terms will get cancelled out. The only thing will be the temperature terms. And now, if you see uh, with this, you can say uh, this I 2, you can replace for I 2 here and replace for I 1 here. And uh, you will find or, or if you just do, you know, uh, cross multiply the terms inside, you can show that they will cancel out and ultimately you will get a neat expression which will say that the change in the balloon air is going to be only P s times 1 upon the temperature at 2 including the superheat minus 1 upon temperature at 1 including superheat times K into V. So, this is only because we have ignored the superheat contribution. We are allowing it to slowly equalize. Later on we will see what happens if you do not allow this to happen when it is sudden. So, I am just copying and pasting the two expressions uh, from the previous slide and the net lift is the difference between the gross weight and the balloonet air. 
So, all of them are not neatly in terms of only the temperatures and the superheats. So, once again if you ignore superheat what do you get? What happens if you ignore superheat? Zero. So, if T s h is 0, delta T s h is 0, then there is no net lift increase, there is a direct compensation. So, if you change T s slowly, the net lift will not change. You allow an airship to stand, so there is a there is an airship which is standing outside. Okay. the temperature of the ambient air changes. If this temperature is conveyed beautifully inside the system and if both the LTA gas and the gas in the balloon air in the balloon get to the same temperature, there will be no net lift change because there will be a cancellation of the increase. But if you look at only the LTA gas weight, only the balloon air weight, there may be differences. But the net lift will not remain the will remain the same, and that is what matters to you. Okay, so we have looked at all these factors. The next one we look at is superheat. Everything else remaining same. We just look at now the effect of superheat. So just like super pressure, the same expressions you will only change delta T S H, and you will ignore changes in T. Okay, so. If you have superheat, what is superheat? Temperature increase because of exposure to high temperature. Okay. So, both the balloon and the gas inside are going to expand because of that increase in the temperature. So, interestingly, balloon weight, balloon air weight will reduce because the balloon gas will be expanded, but W L G will remain the same the gross the weight of the lifting gas will gas is not being thrown out. So, it is weight will remain the same weight of the balloon air will reduce, but weight of the lifting gas will remain the same outside volume remains the same the only differences are in the temperatures. So, since we are not displacing heavier or lighter air. Therefore, gross lift will remain the same. So, net lift will change. Now, many people they have this impression that the net lift changes because you are pushing the air out from the balloon, right? Therefore, there is more volume available for the LTA gas. Same mass of LTA gas occupies more volume, so there is a density decrease. And because of this, the difference in the density between the ambient air and the density inside increases and hence the lift increases. This is a fallacy. This is something which many people assume. The mechanism is not this and I will show you in the next slide. Okay. So, once again I will repeat the fallacy so that you can understand. You will see this in books also and this confused me a lot in the beginning. This is what I also believed that you have an airship and you have a balloon and now you have superheat. So, the lifting gas inside is going to expand and hence it will push the balloon air out. So, the volume available for the LTA gas increases, the mass remains same, density reduces. So, rho A minus rho G, difference increases, net lift increases. No, we will see the mechanism is a bit different. Okay, we just copy the formula from the last time the weight of the balloon air is the difference of the 1 by temperature terms into P s into K v and the net lift is equal to gross lift minus the change in the balloon air. So, the net lift will be equal to P s the same expression that you saw and here what we are doing now is simplifying it. If you simplify it you will get delta T S H 2 minus delta T S H 1 in the numerator upon uh, T A plus T S H 1 and T A plus T S H 2 in the denominator. Now, if you look at the relative value of T A and delta T S H 1, 
and also T A and delta T S H 2 you can actually ignore just to get the order of magnitude analysis you can ignore. So, if you do that you can approximate this value as just the change in the superheat divided by square of the ambient air temperature and between the term on the middle and on the right the difference because of this ignoring is not more than 3 percent. So, if you are ha happy with 3 percent error in general the numbers will change depending on P s and all that, but generally the error is around 3 percent. So, therefore, without much loss of accuracy we can uh, get an expression for net lift change right. Now, let us look at the fallacy, let us look at why there is a mistake. So, we recall that the net lift is basically because of the three terms are there. First term is the gross lift which is rho A into V g. what is this? This is the weight of the air displaced. So, because you brought the airship from somewhere to this place, air of density rho A ambient air density times the V and this G is just for the units. Okay. So, the first term rho A into V G is the gross lift. The second term minus rho L g i into V g is the weight of the lifting gas which has been put in the space created by bringing the airship correct. You brought the airship along with the airship you got what you got the envelope, gondola, blah 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 all those structures plus you also got. So, right now we are ignoring everything else ok. So, you are you are getting in lifting gas in the envelope and you are getting air in the balloon. So, rho L g into i is why i into v is the volume occupied by the lifting gas into the lifting gas density rho L g it will subtract from the gross lift. Then 1 minus i into v is the volume occupied by the balloon. Balloon A also has some gas air inside which has got density that is rho B A rho of balloon A air. In general you cannot assume it to be same as air density we do not know. It may be same as rho A, but we do not know right now. So, we give it a term as rho B A density of the balloon A air. So, with this you get the net lift, but this is not payload net lift is what is the vertical force you get. Now, you subtract the weight of the system blah 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 then you will get the payload ok. Is this point clear to everybody ok. Now, what is the contribution of the lifting gas? The lifting gas contribution is the first part or the, or the middle part sorry which is negative contribution. It is actually a weight. So, it is not giving you lift it is taking away from some lift. So, that contribution is negative rho L g times i into V g ok. Now, as the value of T s H 1 approaches T s H 2. So, we know that the inflation fraction depends on pressure and temperature. So, as the value of T s H 1 approaches T s H 2 the inflation fraction I 1 will approach I 2 value ok. So, now what will be the lift what will be the gross lift difference? It will be the difference between the inflation fraction I 2 and I 1. So, when I change T s H there will be a change in the lifting gas density. It will become L, rho L g 2 from rho L g 1 therefore, the inflation fraction will become I 2 from I 1 and the difference in the lifting uh, gross lift. Gross lift will uh, change only because of the difference between the gas ok. Now, rho L g is the density of the lifting gas that is equal to mass upon volume. So, therefore, rho L g 1 will be mass upon I 1 V and rho L g 2 will be mass upon I 2 V where I 1 and I 2 are the inflation fractions at the two conditions 1 and 2. Mass of the gas remains constant you are not throwing out gas. So, put the value of rho L g 1 and rho L g 2 in this expression you will get m upon I 1 
uh, sorry m upon i 2 v into i 2, i 2 i 2 will cancel and you will get m upon i 1 v into i 1, i 1 i 1 will cancel. So therefore delta L g will be 0 because they will just cancel out each other. If delta L g is 0 then the lifting gas contribution to the delta L g is 0. So lifting gas does not contribute anything to the net lift when there is a change in the superheat because it undergoes a change in the density and through that it simply cancels out. So therefore change of the lifting gas is irrelevant. So when people say that density of the lifting gas has reduced it is actually irrelevant because we have seen here that uh, the density of the lifting gas uh, its change is not going to play any role in the net lift calculation. Okay. Right, now we come to the next point. What what has what is uh, left now? Yes. So that is I would be increasing, right? Because air is being expelled from the vessel. In this case. No, you are looking only at a change in TSH. See, do not make a system suddenly open and suddenly closed and then expect to have the same relationships valid. We are looking at only the contribution of the lifting gas. So yes, I is changing from I1 to I2. I is changing. It was I1 earlier. It became I2. But while becoming I2, the density also has accordingly. So that is what we are trying to say. The change in the inflation fraction will take care of the density change. Therefore, density change is not the mechanism of generating the net lift. We need to figure out why the net lift is changing. 